Hey guys, welcome back to the Multidimensional Journey YouTube channel and thank you so much for returning back to the podcast. This is your host Ayahuasca Carr and today we're going to be talking about some things to keep in mind when choosing your retreat center or your sitter for your next up upcoming Ayahuasca set. And I think this video is good for those who are total beginners but also people who are pretty experienced um, and maybe have learned to have a little bit more preferences along the way as they've developed in their ayahuasca journey. But before we get into that, be sure to, if you're listening to the podcast, be sure to leave a review for the podcast. That really helps me out. And then here on the YouTube channel, please leave um, a comment or like or subscribe to the channel um, if you got some value out of it today. It would really, really help me out. Um, so yeah, let's get into today's topic. So one of the things I was really thinking about when I was thinking about creating this video and this podcast was really slowing down and taking our time and being mindful of this really big decision. You know, I think the way that ayahuasca has been globalized, especially here in the West, um, it can be marketed as like, go here, um, heal, transform, come here now. And um, although that's a marketing, right, that's how marketing works, I think as participants and as mindful consumers um, of such a, you know, I don't even like using the word consumer, right? Um, of such like a sacred process, we really want to slow down and feel into the questions of what do I need for my healing? What does my nervous system need for my preferences? What is going to make me feel the most safe and secure? So ultimately, I can go deeper in that experience. You know, that's that's basically what I've learned on my journey since I've been practicing with ayahuasca in 2016. These days, um, I'm really dialed into the, the three things, the trifecta, which is set, setting, and dosage. I think I used to put a lot of emphasis on the ayahuasca alone and didn't really pay attention to those other three peripherals. I mean, I did, but I feel like now as a more experienced participant and practitioner, um, I've really dialed in what really, really works for me. And what allows me to go the deepest and um, ultimately ultimately what allows me to surrender the most um, and what you know when I talk about surrender that ultimately means you know what setting is going to allow me or allow my nervous system feel the most safe and relaxed you know because anytime the nervous system has to calibrate for something that it's unsure about it's unknown right it causes a little bit of activation and it's not adding to that surrender bucket so anything we can do in our pre-screening with our sitters or our retreat centers, any questions we can ask, you know, these are all really, really important. So when it comes to journey day, ceremony day, dose day, however you want to put that, I feel like I've been a part of the process. I really feel like I've curated this process myself. I've felt empowered enough in the process where um, I was like, you know, I want to make sure I'm in, in this type of setting, you know, like, for example, for me, I really like one-on-one um, -on -one experiences in the daytime, um, where that might not be something you like, but that's something that really helped my nervous system. So you might really want, like, you really thrive in the jungles of Peru with a large group of people. That, that has not been my experience thus far. So it's really up to you to decide what really works for you. But we're going to go over some things today, some questions to keep in mind, um, that sort of thing. But to kick us off here, you know, first and foremost, like take your time. This isn't a process to be rushed. We really get to have a lot of agency um, and really tune into what what we need personally. And I, and I even think like that in itself, like coming into more and a more alignment with knowing what we need. Of course, that is a part of our own transformation and our own healing as well. Um, so first and foremost, um, one of the things, well, the next thing I want to go over is that um, make sure whoever you're deciding to sit with, whether that's an individual or a retreat center, that they have the training and the expertise and the outcomes you desire. So maybe not so much training in a certain lineage, but actually training in, you know, some of the things that you're coming to heal. You know, maybe it's childhood trauma, maybe it's the relationship with your mom, maybe it's the relationship with your dad. Um, other than shamanic training, we, I believe you do want to see some someone else on the team um, or anybody else who has training in the specific area that you're asking for. 
I have found in my own experiences, because I've sat in a lot of different settings, that when we're very specific about our intention, right, this even brings in like our personal intentions for this work, when we get super clear on that, and when we're having those consultation calls, it's like, hey, like, one of my biggest intentions is to heal my childhood trauma or to heal um, the relationship with my mother, with my father. Um, I want to heal my uh, self-worth. I want to bring in more self-love. You know, when we're having those those consultation calls, I would say before booking it, right, because I think that's what happens a lot too, is that people, including myself, book these experiences without ever really talking to anybody for a long amount of time. And which is really interesting because we're signing up for these like very, very serious experiences, which we'll get to another point here in a second. But we really want to get a feel for like, hey, like how how did that help them? Um, you know, what were some of the approaches outside of ceremony? What was done for integration? Um, what are some of your guys' philosophies, theories and foundational approaches other than shamanism? Because what I've experienced in some of these settings is that there's a lot of like spiritual or shamanic lenses to some really deep traumatic things, especially for Westerners. We need that psychological foundation, you know, like somatic experiencing, internal family systems, mindfulness, breath work. We need all these things because we have very delicate nervous systems and we need an integrative approach. So if these are the things that you're looking for and you're a modern Westerner, it's really important to ask these questions up front um, because then you're going to feel more safe and more secure and ensure that the person that you're sitting with has an actual understanding of what you're coming to them with. Um, another kind of tip here is speak to other people who've gone to the retreat. You know, that I feel like that's like one of the best ways to kind of get an insider's view is like talk to other people. You know, if you choose to go to a large group retreat, like somewhere that's out of the country, I definitely highly recommend that you talk to somebody else other than the staff. Um, versus just booking the flight and just and just kind of caution to the wind sort of thing. Although I definitely see that as admirable, admirable. obviously that's courageous. And at the same time, um, there's pros and cons to everything, right? So that can also be really risky um, for some of the things that we're going after here, right? So, so being sure to talk to other people who've gone through the program or the retreat and ask them about their experiences. Try to get a mixed review, you know, try to you know, not just people who ranted and raved about it, but also people who were kind of like um, really honest about their experience and said, hey, like there were some good things over here and there were some other things I saw over here. Because um, remember, you're investing a lot into this experience, including um, your mind, body and spirit. Right. So just I think that could also be a good way to kind of prepare your nervous system for such an experience. Um, I think this point right here is probably probably one of the biggest discerning and telltale signs. So ultimately, um, does this place feel safe to your nervous system? And does it feel in alignment to you? So regardless of all the information you gather, regardless of all the, you know, the rational part of our brains, in your body, in your soul, in your spirit, is it in alignment for you? You know, maybe you've you've read online like, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. And you've talked to people and it's so amazing. And maybe you've gone into Facebook groups, it's so amazing. But maybe there's something in your heart or hearts or your gut that says like, I don't know what it is, but it just doesn't feel in alignment. I would encourage you to slow down and feel into that because maybe that's your body's way of saying like, maybe this isn't the right opportunity for you. Of course, everyone's different and it's really hard to, you know, speak to everyone individually through just a video. But I have found that, you know, the body does speak volumes. So ultimately trusting your own intuition. One of the other things that you want to be sure in your pre-vetting or pre-screening process is that you actually see, you know, as you sign up for it or even in your consultation call with the place that you're talking to, at some point early on, you see that there's some sort of really rigorous pre-mental health and medical screening that they put you through, you know, and that that will look like they're asking you about heart issues, they're asking you about lung issues, they're asking you about all your medical history, they're asking you about contraindications medically, contraindications with mental health. Um, so you just want to be sure that there's something where you kind of, you know, you have to, you should have an experience of like, dang, this is a lot to fill out. Because the truth is, is that it should feel that way. Because ayahuasca does have a lot of contraindications. And ultimately, that is to keep you 
um, in your mind, in your body, um, in your spirit, very, very safe. So you do want to see that. That's very, very important. If you ever came across a retreat center or someone you're working with who did no pre-screening on you, that would, I would say that's definitely a red flag. Um, and I think we already, we already talked about this before, but I'll just reiterate it. Um, like, you know, don't feel like you need to rush into a journey or a ceremony just because you feel like it's the only option that's coming like towards you at this time. Once again, really doing your pre-vetting, really being curious. Remember, um, you're kind of co-creating the experience. And at this point in, in the terms, in terms of the, you know, the psychedelic and plant medicine renaissance, there are plenty of options. I personally believe you should never feel like this is it. This is the only option. There's plenty of options out there. There's an abundant amount of practitioners out there, retreat centers. You know, there's definitely uh, somewhere that can fit your needs. So don't ever feel like you're pigeonholed into an experience and it's like now or never. I feel like when we make decisions out of that, it's it can be out of fear. And this is definitely one decision that we want to make sure it's grounded and well thought out. Um, because ultimately it's for your safety. You know, that's the most important thing. And, um, last but not least, you know, so say you've done all these things, you're like, put in the research, you felt really good about it. All the ducks are in a row. You did, you made sure they had a medical pre-screening. You had a couple conversations with the retreat center or the, the sitter. Maybe it was even referral from a friend. Um, you know, all the things, everything told your nervous system, safe, surrender, ready to go. And so say you get there and things start feeling off. And I, and I really mention this because I have worked with people where this exact scenario has happened. So it does happen. Okay. And it has happened to me too. So we can do all the things and then it can still feel kind of off. So, um, and we want to honor that, you know, I think like, it's, it's not that it's not your ego. You're not full of fear. Like, you know, like none of that. It is your body talking somatically. It's parts of you are picking up on, hey, something doesn't feel right here. Something doesn't feel safe. And we want to honor that process because that is also a part of the healing. We have to understand all parts of us, our nervous system, mind, body, spirit, the whole family inside, right? With all the memories, with all the wounding, with all the bliss, with all the potential, with all the transformation. We're choosing a very serious experience here. So we want to honor that. We want to listen to that. First and foremost, you know, always, always honor that. That's definitely the school I come from. Don't ever feel like you need to override your nervous system or push yourself into a situation that you don't feel comfortable with. I will say this though, one way that any of us can safeguard ourselves from these types of experiences is that, you know, just, just go slow with your dose, you know, that way you can really feel things out for yourself and like discern, right? Cause that's like, you know, is it, is it the pre-ceremony jitters or is my, is my body really picking up on something? So no matter what though, if we do slowly, right, then <clears throat> um, we're not going to end up in an experience where we're way too high. And then like the facilitators, perhaps like they're not able to hold like a sacred space. There's a lot of chaos in the room. Um, this has happened to me but it's happened to lots of people. So I've, I've realized putting out my videos, um, this isn't an uncommon experience. So the way we kind of work with that is as long as we dose slow, we can kind of like give our nervous systems time to calibrate to the experience. And we're also kind of like, before we choose to go deep with absolute strangers, right? I think that's the funniest thing about this work is like, you know, it's so common for people to be like, yeah, like, put 20, 30 people in a room and like, let's just get blasted and go for it. And I will say that definitely used to be me, you know, but with some maturity and some learning and um, a lot of interesting experiences over the years, I've learned like, it's just better to go slow. You know, it's safer for you. It's safer for me. It's just, it's, um, it's better that way. So, um, so going slow in your dose and I have a whole video on titrating your dose. You can look that up. Um, but that will ensure, you know, like, you have a choice whether you want to go deeper in the next coming nights because often these retreats are multiple nights in a row and that sort of thing so as long as you go slow you can do that gut check and then you can decide for yourself so i hope this video was helpful in choosing pre-vetting uh, researching deciding who you want to sit with what retreat center you want to go to would love to hear your comments and your questions down below 
Um, and like I said, if you like this podcast, leave a review. And if you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and check out the link below and all the links below for my upcoming workshops, uh, ways to work with me, subscribe to my newsletter. Um, I do monthly breathwork circles, uh, free meditations when you sign up for the newsletter, all the good things. So thank you guys so much and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.